Okay, so I'm recording myself. Hopefully I'm not all up in the screen because estoy hasta la chingada de fea. But anyways, today is a very exciting day for me. Um, about a year ago or so, I had tried to come to the um, mental hospital that Betty Page was at. And it was closed completely because obviously COVID was still a big thing last year. And they were not allowing anybody, period, to step foot in here. So I kept checking back and checking back. Um, oh yeah, let me explain to you guys. So it's still a mental hospital running, but the original first part that was built like in the 18, 1890s or something was turned into a museum. So they have actual things that they use, like back then, used with the D, they used them. And they have them on display. They have the original part of the, um, like the office, the intake office and stuff like that. And that's where I've been wanting to go. Because it's like a big historic, um, like, you know, it's a big piece of history. And because Betty Page was there, so, you know, um, it's kind of cool. I'm a fan. A lot of other famous stars have been there also, um. So, yeah, like I said, I had been checking in and checking in, and they were still close, close, close. Finally, about three months ago, they emailed me, and they said they were open and taking um, reservations for groups to come and check it out. Of course, I emailed right back, and I said, yeah, like, we're so in, so this is what we're doing. It was only on appointment. Um... I had signed up a group of seven because I was thinking, um, you know, like my mother or my sister, somebody would come. But it, today's a straight Tuesday and it's like one o'clock, so whatever. But it is so exciting. So we are here in the city of Highland. It's called Patton Mental um, Hospital Museum or something. And I totally forgot, like always, that we needed masks. Because I always forget everything. Like every important detail of everything. I just forget. I don't know what the heck is wrong with me. Anyways. Um, we came here to 7-Eleven. Hopefully they sell the little packs. And um, we have the appointment at 1 o'clock. Um, there's going to be an actual like. Um, the volunteers. But they take us on the whole walk and stuff. I seen a lot of um, pictures that say no photographs, no this, no that. I am so bummed out because I want to get a feel. Like, I want to record. You know, that's life for me. So, anyways, guys, that's what is up right now. I will try to record as much if I can and wait for the video, guys. So, they say no videos, no pictures, but I just wanted to take a quick one. This is the front Department of Corrections. This is the ward that they have the mentals in. Um, like I had mentioned before, Betty Page was here in the early 80s and she did 20 months here. Reason behind it was she tried to kill her landlord. So, um, yeah, they put her in here because they were saying that she was having a mental, um, like a, what is it, breakdown? And they put her in here. She did almost two years here. Obviously, this um, place is huge. It goes all the way in the back. Here's some of it. That's part of the museum there. So, yeah, the where's the map? There's a map that the um, lady emailed me. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, it is huge in here. So yeah, we're going to start our um, the tour right now and go from there. Like I said, I'm going to try to record as much as I can. But they said, ni mais. So yeah, here's the signs here. Warning, firearms or deadly weapons. No, we're not in the mood to do none of that. Here's a, a museum part, part of it. So yeah, all right guys. So this is where we were standing. It says museum, but they're labeled. It says R4. So we're gonna come in front of this little old house. 
It's a really cute little old house. At this point, we had met our tour guide. Her name was Virginia, and she took us to the north side of the property to do an official check-in. All that is still in operation, by the way. She told me to take a picture of this bus stop, that it had a lot to do with what they will be showing us. So I did. Let's check it out. Family members from visitors. So they weren't actually from our patients. Um, and then it's on the back. Beyond that. 
So it's just something we kept. If you had a family member here, maybe you didn't want anybody else to know. Mm -hmm. And if we, you know, it's just a gift for us. Yeah. We do have a nice um, plaque mm -hmm. out, out there where they are buried and things like that with like a brief, you know, little saying and stuff. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to this one. So in here we have our lipsticks, jewelry, and keys. Um, patients, there's a ring right here. That one's a spoon. Patients would often, uh, they had metal spoons, so they would often um, bend them and break them uh, to be rings. Um, here we have all of our lipsticks. All of our lipsticks and stuff were found across the street from us. Um, our historian says that you can still open them and smell them, and they still look as well as they were when they were made. Um, this bottle right here laying down the consumption on it, um, what that meant was that this bottle was used for tuberculosis patients. Um, so this bottle was had chloroform and cocaine with inside of it. So the chloroform would help with the coughing, whereas the cocaine would give them the euphoric feeling of feeling better, even though it didn't actually treat them, just gave them the feeling of being treated. Um, and then right here is a map of our current facility. This is what it looks like. The numbers right here would represent the units. These are no longer the units that we have. Hey, you're helping me out. That's where I was pointing to. <laughs> um, this right here was our tuberculosis um, building. It was actually built for our TB patients. And so it uh, was built with windows all around it. So the sunlight would come in because the heat would help with TB. Um, it is still currently our hottest building um, on campus. So, yeah. And then we have our discharge logs. Um, these discharge logs are from the 1800s. Um, the reason that we can still see, we still have the access to them today, is because of our dry climate out here in California. A lot of um, other state hospitals on the East Coast don't have access to some of their original books. Um, because of the climate they're living in. Um, these just discharge papers were given to patients when they would leave so they could show their family and um, co-workers and other people that they were treated and they're better. So this right here is a picture of our original facility. It <coughs> so, uh, always look like it does today. This picture was taken in 1914-1915, and it stood, patent stood this way until uh, 1927, um, when we suffered a major earthquake. So we are actually on the San Andreas Fault, and it actually ran right through this road. So when it, um, the earthquake happened, destroyed a big part of our hospital. And the only thing that was left standing was our administration building, which you can see right there. Um, and so the center part stood up until 1955. Um, and the building was made out of red rock, which was extremely brittle uh, for earth. Uh, it was made out of red rock because um, we housed a lot of arson patients. We didn't want them to uh, start a fire and burn down our facilities. So a little bit about this built, this type of building. It's uh, originally called the Kirkbride flip model. It was made by a man in Pennsylvania, or I'm sorry, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Um, you can't really tell, but the administration building came out and everything else popped back. So it was almost like a V. Um, and then the administration building right here, it would house our one doctor and the, yeah, one doctor and superintendent were in there. And it was, the left side was for male patients and the right side was for females. Um, and basically what would happen is when a patient would come in, um, they would start way at the very back, and as their treatment progressed, they would get closer and closer to the administration building. So, yes, okay. so where you were placed within the hospital depended on where you were in your treatment, um, and how close you were to getting out. Um, the only part of this building that still stands today is this little piece right here. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at the time, it was the largest structure within San Francisco County. Um, and when they rebuilt, they no longer built in the middle. Yeah. 
because of the fall tissue. So that's oh. why it's so long way down. Mm-hmm. So you have your left and your right. And mm-hmm. then, um, so Patton was originally built on a, uh, on a hill, which is again a political statement, having enough high, um, but it also aided in our tunnel system. So we do have a tunnel system underneath Patton, and that was for our kitchen. So because uh, building, I mean the kitchen was in the back, in the back it still is today, um, due to fire reason, but because this building was a design that was in the east coast, Snow is a lot east coast, you can't transport food in the snow. So they created tunnel systems. We no longer use our tunnel systems, um, though they are still there. Um, and the hill would aid in that because it would use gravity. So they have the railroad down the railroad tracks, and they would send the carts down and then just pull them up. Um, our historian has been down there, uh, I think he's been the only one in a couple of years, and the railroads are still down there. <laughs> I'm not trying to see it. <laughs> um, these are stones from our original structure. They're also in front of our administration building. These stones in particular were actually this part right here, this middle part line um, of the building. So. So we move in here to our kitchen area. I can watch your step real quick. Okay? Yep. Um, Ceramic, came back. Yeah. 
so a lot of the clippings and sugar ba bags and things you see right there are from the tw 1920s and were tossed in um, an air vent or a ceiling, yeah, kind of like an attic of one of our buildings when our hospital was still open grounds. So it was in our HR department. Um, I think there was a renovations or something was going on in there and um, they found those within the attic. So we made this little section to different represent people. that. Huh? It belonged to different people. It was a patient. So like a patient shoved all of that stuff oh, in a bag. Person? Yeah, I believe to be yes. And then tossed it into the attic. Oh, well, um, so there's fake money in there which is believed to be used for games that they would have played. Yeah. Um, different things like that, news clippings. And back when I started, they were allowed to have coins. Mm -hmm. So I used to joke with the, the patients, they would come through the line and they would say, give me some more cake, give me the big piece of cake. And I'm like, you got a dollar. Like, I would give nothing for free. You know, I would joke with them. And one day a patient came through and he put a big old bag with all his change. And he's like, Vicki, I want the big cake. And um, I was like, okay. And he called me Vicky because back then our badges had our first initial with our last name. Oh, so he assumed And so they guessed. Yeah. They just picked random names. The higher functioning patients called me Virgie because they knew. But the lower functioning would call me Vicky. What year did you start here? In 93. 93? Yeah. I'm coming up to my 29th year. Wow. That's amazing. She ages at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> she, well, she started the same year as our anniversary. Yeah, 1893 and then 1993. It's really cool. It's a real blessing. My mom and aunt actually worked here, and my mom was pretty like, you know, you need to go, you need to apply. They have openings in the kitchen, you need to apply. They have good benefits, you have your daughter now. And I was like, okay, mom. Yeah. It's a great place to work. I've only been here since November, but oh. it's amazing. Sounds fun. Are you enjoying your stuff? Yeah. Do you think it's the patient? Or the... Oh, probably the guards trying to hold the door closed. 
Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So a lot of uh, a lot of our facilities use you know, keys to get into every door. Some of them always don't always lock automatically. So we still today will kick the door shut, hold it with our foot, and to then lock it. So. Yeah. Sorry, hun. I had a door like that on my office in a position that I have prior to this one. And I requested to have it covered because in the building that it was in, it's a very old building. So there's heat in the in the actual offices, but not in the hall. I don't know why, but so it was cold in my office all the time. And I was like, I need this covered because I can't, it's too cold in here. Well, do you ever see anything uh, paranormal or hear anything? <laughs> But there was one day when I heard a door. It was three staff that worked in the end. Myself, the lady I assisted, um, our Native American chaplain, actually those four of us, and one uh So I thought it was our Native American chaplain. Didn't think nothing of it. And then later on, I, we were going to group, and I walked into him, and I was like, you're already getting here? And he's like, yeah. So I was like, well, what was that? But that, that's all. But I have heard lots of stories, and I've been here when lots of things have happened. Um, they don't scare me, I think, because I'm just so used to it here. But yes, there there's still stories here. I, I think some of them are pretty neat. I'm mm -hmm. um, in the EB building that I shared with you. I said this is the EB building. We had a custodian who passed away. Coolest guy ever. Um, at the time, they were doing work on one of the units, so it was closed. On the second floor, a nurse comes out of that unit door, and the staff that saw her were like, you know, she was like, oh, I was lost, and a custodian helped me. And so they looked, the two staff that were with her, I don't know who they were, looked at each other like, there's, that, that's, there's nobody on that unit. And she said, yeah, it was a man. And she described him. Well, she described our friend Frank, who had passed oh. away. Um, he didn't speak to her. He just kind of guided her. So it was it was creepy, but cool at the same time. Because we're like, oh, you know, he will be still working. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah.
basically done to create a seizure within your brain to then fire your neurons a specific way to then um, cause other chemicals within your brain to be released to help with different um, disorders. So electroshock therapy is still used today, um, not here at Patton, at other facilities. Um, and it's used mainly for people with severe depression. Um, and it has been found to help people. Um, we obviously just don't do it at the capacity, uh, maybe as high of a uh, setting or whatever that people used to back in the day. Um, so the next we have our uh, restraints, our leather restraints. These were um, created by a man in Massachusetts. Uh, he worked with horses. So prior to the 1700s, um, they would use metal to um, restrain patients and people, not at our, ever at our facility. Um, but when we started housing people, we wanted to find a more humane way. This is it. And then, those are still what they look like today, actually. Um, restraints aren't used as often today as they were uh, prior. Um, now you have to have doctor clearance. You have to have a uh, staff member watching them at all times. And they happen very rarely, if at all. So then we have our straight jacket right here. This is not from our facility. Um, it is a replica of what they would have looked like um, back in the day. And then we have our lobotomy picks um, and different things like that by Dr. Freeman. He made this. Uh, I won't get into too much detail, um, but it was basically used for people with different emotional disorders as well. Um, and would go up into the brain, scramble it a little bit, and uh, that's what that was used for. And Dr. Friedman was also related to the person who created Listerine. Listerine was originally created for as a cleaning tool. Um, it was uh, it was originally made for mouthwash, but this bottle is from. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, um, it was believed back in that time period that the dirtier you were as a doctor, the more, um, the more successful you were, even though that caused a lot of patients to pass away. So, when the doctor who created Listerine, the idea, he was actually ridiculed for it until it was started. He started noticing that his patients were surviving, um, and then they. Uh, then adopted it, and now we obviously sanitize our tools. What's interesting is the person that made the lobotomy, they were related, and he, Dr. Freeman, who made that, did not believe in sanitation. Um, he thought it was a farce, so he didn't agree with it at all. So here we have what looks like our patient room back then. Um, this is not the type of bed that we now have on unit because they have metal frames. currently still wear. Um, the uniforms <coughs> weren't originally, patients weren't originally supposed to wear uniforms. Um, they actually wore regular clothes and the staff wore uniforms. Um, but after some you know, things happened, 
the staff, the patients now wear khaki uniforms, whereas the staff do not wear any uniforms. Um, this is a way for us to identify who is a patient and who is not, um, if anything were to happen. Yeah. Every once in a while, if there's just a random person walking outside the gate mm -hmm. and they're wearing all khaki, and someone sees them, and then they'll do an emergency count. Oh, yeah. Just because those colors are, you know, yeah. close to our patient population. Mm -hmm. So I just want to assure that everyone's where they should be. Right? Or is it the other way around? 
So yeah, we're the only one of the only ones in the California that has gold. Right here in this little tiny room, we have where um, chapels look like. You guys can check that out on the this is where chapels look like. We do have um, chaplains for just about every religion um, for our patients currently today um, to aid in their treatment, treatment and their religious beliefs. Did you explain this part or did I miss it? Oh, no, you're good. So this part is just some of our, um, we used to actually have um, doctors and surgeons and um, everything was done here. So currently I think we only do dental, uh, but we actually used to provide uh, surgeries and different things like that for our patients. Um, now they get sent to a different facility for that. Uh, but this is what some of the old medical beds used to look like. These are some of the surgical tools that were used. Um, and then we have our x-ray machines. And then, so that was the EV building. Mm -hmm. And I pointed out, back of course, back in this year, you were able to drive up and park and mm -hmm. just walk right in. Uh, we did have a morgue, and it was active when I started. And I don't know, it was active pretty, it was active for a few years after. I remember when I had to work on that building, if I worked for him, I would be afraid to take out the trash because he knew it was later in the evening. Um, and it was a little scary. Yeah. But then you just get used to it, you know. Uh, Everywhere here is scary. Yeah. You walk into it alone. Thank you. 
having all the bosses listen to it. And my husband at the time, you know, especially it was my cousin that this happened to. And he was like, that, no, no, you guys, no, you guys are being silly. But when he heard the voice, creepiest voice ever. And then the Male or female? It sounded female. Yeah. Help me. Help me. Like, really spooky. So um, she got a hold of her daughter and was like, hey, you know, you left me like a weird message. She said, no, I didn't. Well, she said, I heard your voice message, your voicemail started and I hung up before I could even do a message. So I don't know what happened there, but we all heard it. We all witnessed it. She had it on her phone forever and then finally. Um, but it was a really, really, really spooky voice to hear. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> Died here. Yeah. Yeah. And it took a 24 hour facility. 24 hour facility. Yeah. Stuff to be here. I guess in the morning. <laughs> I will say it's a little spooky leaving at night. I've left a couple times when it's been completely dark because I've had something going on afterwards that I was like, oh, I'll just get ready, like in the bathroom for or whatever. And it is spooky. Like after dark, you're like, oh, geez, and you're the only one walking in the parking lot. And yeah. <laughs> It does, it does be a little spooky. I had, um, in the building that I used to work in prior to this, See, uh, yeah. uh, uh, we had a custodian and she would not go behind the gate until I got there. So I'd have to call her and be like, Gigi, I'm here. And then she'd say, okay, Bertie, let's go. And she'd pick me up in the car and we'd drive down because she was like, I'm not going into that building without you. <laughs> okay. Again? Yeah. She said, you talking about it? Let's go. Uh, All of the buildings here are still like the original buildings as well. Um, like even this building, this is the original floor of this building. Uh, everything is original except that door. <laughs> uh, that had to be made uh, when we were when the museum was being created. Um, it was one of the last times they had brought this in. They'd taken it out three or four times and it broke the door. It was glass, the really nice glass French door right there. Um, and then they did want to put in one of the big panels that they had a picture of. Mm -hmm. They're both big metal. They're pots. And each cook, like maybe one cook was assigned to do the ground beef. And the next one was going to do the noodles or whatever. So, yeah, they would stir them themselves. Mm -hmm. But it didn't fit me. No. So, that's why they just got pictures because it's way too big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and this is only just like a third yeah. of that is of our actual collection. Um, everything else is in the archive room. And that was the end of the tour. I think it was completely neat. If you watched until the end, thank you for your patience. I know it was hard to listen to. Um, not only was the tour guy new... But I wasn't sure if I was able to record. So I do apologize for all the noise and the poor quality of the audio. Any picture labeled reference, I don't own copyrights to. I found them on Google, the Patton Hospital website, and Pinterest. I do hope you enjoyed and learned something with this video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you guys.